What's up mob crew? I'm Chris and today's short video we're going over some secondary scenarios that could have happened that night of June 7th including is it possible Alex got rid of Maggie's iPhone before he left for Almeida? Plus could it be possible that Paul found the stash of pills and that could have led to the events that happened on June 7th? Also Alex is facing a new charge. We'll go over that and more in today's video. Welcome back to the channel everybody where we cover murder mystery to the missing So if you haven't seen my complete timeline video, please check it out. The link is at the top right hand corner So after listening to Alex recent testimony and learning that he must have driven the golf cart at some point around the night of the shooting In my opinion the shooting started at approximately 849 with Paul being shot first and then Maggie being shot between approximately 8.50 and 8.51. And now since it's over pretty quickly and it's time to clean up his tracks, would Alex risk keeping Maggie's iPhone on him until he leaves for his mother's in Almeida? Or was he thinking about the possibility of it being tracked? Which leads us to an alternate scenario for when Alex may have gotten rid of Maggie's iPhone. Since the shooting was over pretty quickly at approximately 8.51, Alex could have drove the golf cart back down the runway southeast towards their fields, then pulls up close to Moselle Road and gets out at exactly 8.53 and 15 seconds, where he walks across the road, recording the 59 steps until 8.55 and 32 seconds. During this time, he is handling the phone, causing the phone to come on and also record two orientation changes. Then he tosses the phone somewhere from the road, just past the clearing into the tree line. At Alex's height, 59 steps would convert to approximately 160 feet, which is the length of that crossing to where the phone was tossed. This would still give Alex plenty of time to either go back to the kennels for a few minutes or go back to the house, but now he doesn't have to worry about Maggie's iPhone pinging near him or the property, which would also make it look like an outsider came into the property, then after the shootings, left right away, taking Maggie's phone, and also now you have a piece of evidence that is just outside the property. Now Maggie's iPhone does record one more orientation change, coincidentally at 9.06 and 12 seconds. And with the recent tests, we were able to cause a phone to change orientation if it landed near, say, a rock or a stick, like we see in the picture with Maggie's phone. And with Alex calling her iPhone a few times at 9.04 and 9.06, it's quite possible that if the vibration was on the phone and calling it could cause an orientation change, which we were able to replicate here. Although her phone locks up forever at 8.49 and 31 seconds until Sled would recover it the next day, Maggie's backlight on her phone comes on a few times throughout the rest of the night. But that is only because it receives missed calls and text messages being sent to her phone, which causes the backlight to come on and off, and not by someone actually handling it. Also, was there a secondary motive? Alex Murdoch says multiple times on the stand and in an interview that his son Paul was like a little detective. I mean, he was like a little detective. And I mean, Paul would, you know, he, you know what yeah. I'm trying to say? Yeah. And what does that really mean? Well, Paul had discovered Alex's stash of pills prior to June 7th. Detective mean as it related to the pills. If there were pills in the house that his dad was taking that he wasn't supposed to, Paul was determined that he would find them. And apparently known about Alex Murdoch's bad addiction to pills for some time. Could it be possible that Paul had discovered his stash again that day on June 7th and could have hidden the stash? And was there some kind of argument that night during dinner and they wanted Alex to get help? And this could have escalated and Paul and Maggie left and Alex went to go confront possibly Paul about the pills 
and Alex lost it and shot Paul. And unfortunately, Maggie was a witness to it and had to be taken out as well. This is just purely speculation, of course, but could explain a secondary motive. And with the mass amount of footsteps between 902 and 906, where Alex logs 283 steps in just four minutes, could it be possible that he was looking for his stash that could have been hidden by Paul? It seems odd that the only conversation he remembers that night is about Paul's swollen feet, but can't recall any other conversation with Maggie and Paul that night. And could this be because that Paul and Maggie were possibly confronting Alex about his addiction and it got out of hand? Sadly, this is one of the biggest motives, money and drugs. Also, if you haven't heard, Alex had been recently charged with a new misdemeanor. They haven't said what it is, but I'm sure we can all safely assume it will probably be the charge of lying to detectives since he lied about being at the kennels. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you think that one of these secondary scenarios makes sense? Please smash that like button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And thank you so much for watching.